Cool. We're going to talk a little bit about Hess's Law. In my opinion, this is one of the hardest things in all of Chem 113. So if you can get this down and master this, you've mastered one of the hardest things in all of Chem 113. So a little bit of a pain in the butt, but there is a nice systematic process to this, but you definitely want to practice this to get good. Whole idea behind Hess's Law is, again, that delta H is a state function. Hess's Law is used to calculate delta H, and it just says that if you've got some lovely chemical reactions over here, if you can add them up in such a way that it adds up to exactly this, that might not be the actual pathway that this reaction takes, but do I care about pathway for delta H? Nope, it's a state function. Only depends on the initial state and the final state. Now, how many reactions have I supplied you with to be able to figure out this guy's delta H? No. No. Not three, not four, not two. I've given you an infinite number. Because I haven't just given you these three reactions. If this reaction's delta H is negative 113 kilojoules, what's the reverse reaction's delta H? Oh, positive. positive 113. So now how many have I given you? Well, it's not six either. Because I'm not limited to just reversing this. What if I double all the coefficients? Make that a four, make that a two, make that a four. What happens to delta H then? times two. If you double all the coefficients, it doubles the value. So I can multiply any one of these reactions by any factor, and I can switch them around and change the sign. So really, I have an infinite number of combinations here. And out of that infinite number of possible reactions I've supplied you with, you've got to add up exactly the correct ones to get exactly this. And that can be a little bit of pain in the butt, but there is a systematic way to do it. We're going to do it the long way here, and then we're going to do it the short way. You need to focus on what you're looking for. Don't focus on what you're given to figure it out. Focus on what you're looking for. The first thing I'm looking for is NO. So does NO show up in any of the provided reactions? All three have NO? Are you sure? Good. First one and the last one. If what you're looking for shows up in more than one of these reactions, make it the last thing you do. Skip it for now. OK, so then go to the next one you need, N2O. Which of these reactions does that show up in? Only the second one, right? And in this case, I need N2O to be a product. Is N2O a product in this reaction? It is. Well, at least I know I don't have to flip it around. I need exactly one mole. Does it have exactly one mole of N2O? It does not. How many does it have? It has two. So I don't need this reaction. I need exactly half of this reaction. That's what I actually need. So in this case, I'm going to divide the whole reaction by two, which also divides the delta H by two. So in this case, instead of a 2, I'm going to have a 1. So that's just plain old N2 gas. So plus half O2, if I divide that coefficient half, goes to just a single N2O gas. The whole reason for doing this was this right here. And if that delta H is, two t or is 163, this is going to be half of 163 for this reaction's delta H. Now, again, does N2O show up in either of the other two reactions? It does not. So this number is never going to change. I made sure that I formed exactly one mole of N2O because the reaction I'm looking for forms exactly one mole of N2O. So that's fixed. That's not going to change. So now I need to find NO2. Does NO2 show up in any of these reactions? Which one? Just the first one. That's the only place it shows up. And since that's the only one that shows up, I can deal with it. Now, I need NO to be a product. Is NO a product here? Yeah. Yes. I need exactly one mole. Is it exactly one mole? Ooh, no, it's two moles again, so I need to divide this one by two as well. And so when I add that one in, so in this case, I guess we'll just do this all in red. So NO gas plus O2 gas, oh, one half O2 again, goes to NO2 gas. And again, if this reaction is negative 113, then this one is going to be half of negative 113. Finally, now I need to go back and deal with the NO. So again, I added this one in, this middle reaction in, because it sets the N2O up to be exactly what I need to be. I added this first one in because it sets the NO2 up to be exactly what I need it to be. Now I need to figure out how to add this third reaction in to make this all work. So typically, I could give you 50 reactions and make you figure it out, but you'd never finish the test. So I've never seen a professor ever give an example where they didn't give you exactly what you needed. They didn't give you extra stuff. So in this case, we haven't used this one. We better figure out where it needs to go. So I'm going to go back to the NO. Two of these reactions contain NO. It's right here, and it's right here. Let's just pretend I didn't see this one right for a minute. If I didn't see this, what would I have done to this top reaction to make it work out? 
So, well, in this case, I would multiply it by three halves. So, to get three moles. But then when I would have gone through and added this reaction in later, I would have thrown the number off. And that's why if a species shows up in more than one of the reactions, save it for the end. At this point, I've already used this reaction. How many NOs have I already got in here? One. How many more do I need to get a total of three? Well, I've got one. I need three. So how many additional ones? Two more. This reaction needs to give me those two more. So, well, nice. It already has a coefficient of two. But which side do I need the NOs on? The reactant side or the product side? The reactants. Which side are they on here? Product. So I need to flip this reaction exactly around. And so when I add it in, it's actually going to be 2NO going to N2 plus O2. And again, I did that to get my two additional NOs to add up with this one to get me a total of three. And if this reaction has a delta H of positive 181, then what's the delta H for this one? Good, negative 181. Good, and we'll get there in a minute. But I'm actually gonna take the time to add all this together, I know. I'm gonna take all these reactants and add them up together and all these products and add them up together into one giant reaction. Because, and when I do, what does all this have to add up to? It has to add up to exactly this. And if it does, then these three delta H's will add up exactly to the delta H of the desired reaction. So in this case, I'm going to do this the long way just once. And then we're going to do this the fast way the next time around. So in this case, NO and two more NOs gives me three NO gas. Half an O2 and half an O2 gives me one O2, which I guess I'll just write O2, plus N2. And that's all my reactants. Cool. Now my products. I've got NO2. I've got N2O. And I've got N2 and O2. If it doesn't ask for a net ionic equation, do you have to make one anyways? Like, you like so, and again, here, this has nothing to do with net ionic equations at this point. So Hess's law and net ionic equations, two different things, two different chapters. So the net ionic equations is going to come up when we're doing like double displacement or single replacement reactions, things like that. So, but in this case, none of these are going to cancel in terms of like spectator ions or anything like that, but they are going to cancel just because they show up on both sides of the arrow. Yeah. So, right. cool. So in this case, what shows up on both sides of the arrow that I can cancel? Good. And what am I left with? All said and done. And again, so I wrote these backwards from what's up here, but it's the same reaction, right? And in this case, then their delta H's add up to the overall reaction's delta H. And what do those three add up to? Did you say? Point? Okay, great. I'll just leave it there then. Kilojoules. Negative 156. Let me just make sure that's about right. Negative 181. Half of that. Yes, I am. Okay, sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, so I'm not really checking the calculator's math, but the operator of the calculator's math. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Does it seem like something you have a lot of time to do on a test? If you could do it quick enough. <laughs> Is there any quick way to do this? Sort of by not writing it all out. Let's do the second example on your handout there and see how this works the fast way. Okay, the next one involving Hess's law here. So this is the reaction, the desired reaction of interest. These are the three provided reactions. And the question is, what is delta H? So we are not gonna write this all out this time. Here's how we're gonna approach this. We do the same thing, but instead of writing it all out, just kinda, kinda factor it all in. That's the first thing I need, C2H4. Does it show up in exactly one reaction or more than one? Exactly one. What do I need to do to this reaction to make it look exactly like this? One mole on the reactant side. Flip it. And if I flip it, what does that do to the delta H value? Good, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative one. Great. 
So that makes sure that works out. Does F2 show up in exactly one of these reactions? Oh, it shows up in two of them. So what do I do? S leave it till the end. Sweet. Skip it. Move on to CF4. Does CF4 show up in exactly one of these reactions? Yeah, yeah the middle one. Does it show up exactly how I need it to? No. How do I make it show up exactly how I need it to? Good. It's on the product side already, but I need two moles. So we'll double the whole thing. And if I double the whole thing, that would double the delta H value as well. Good. And that takes care of the CF4. Now, finally, the HF. Does HF show up in the last reaction? Yes. And how do I make it look exactly like this? Good. It's already on the product side, but there's two moles instead of four and double it. And if I need to double it, that will also double this. If you get to this point and you've used all your reactions, assuming you did everything correct, you're done. So however, so if you haven't used all your reactions, you might have another reaction left that needs to cancel some stuff out or something like this. Now, who's the other one we skipped here? The 6F2. We added it in right here, and we doubled this reaction, so we'd get two of them right there. We added it in right here, and we doubled this reaction. That would make this four. And so how many F2s do we end up with? Six, just like we're supposed to. So, and all the other stuff we're not supposed to end up with is going to indeed cancel out. Like these carbons are going to cancel out with these ones once you flip this one around and stuff like that and double this reaction. The H2s are going to cancel out as well. But everything's going to work out perfectly. Life is good. Question. What? So all about what you need. So if you notice, like on this one, how many moles of HF do I need? Four. Four. How many are in this reaction, though? Yeah. Two. What do I need to do this reaction to make it look just like that? Double. Double it. What would I do if I only needed a single mole of HF? What would I do to this reaction in that case? Cut it in half. And that's what we did on this one over here. Cool. So in this case, if these three with these processes carried out give me exactly that, then these delta H's are going to give me the overall delta H. And what does this come out to? Oh, negative 2,484.3. Great. It does sound right, because I've used this example a million times. Any questions? Cool, this is a real pain in the butt. Watching me work out a couple examples, not sufficient. I saw you working a bunch on mastering chemistry, but I would do you know, three or four of these at the very least. It's a pain, but totally worth doing. So mastering chemistry's got some good examples, plenty in the back of your book as well. Next way to calculate delta H are using what we call enthalpies of formation. Does, enthalpy, does anybody know the exact definition of an enthalpy of formation? Good, you don't need to, yet. So in order to use an enthalpy of formation, you do not ha have to know what it means. You will have to know what it means for its own sake in a little bit, because I can ask a question on that, but you don't have to know what it means to be able to use it. So this is the easy one. This is the plug and chug, products minus reactants. You just add up all the individual enthalpies of formation for all the products, and then subtract out those for the reactants. You have to remember to multiply by the coefficients if there are any and stuff like that. It takes all that into account. So, but that's it. So if we look here, one thing you're supposed to know, and we'll get this when we talk about the definition, is any element, not a compound, but any element already in its standard state has a delta H or a delta G of formation of zero by definition. We'll talk about why that comes out with the definition in a little bit. So right off the bat, these values are zero, which is why they weren't provided for you on the handout there, because I, I didn't need to provide them. They're zero, and we expect you to remember that an element in its standard state is zero. So in this case, delta H of the reaction, it's just products minus reactants. So I've got two water molecules. So that's going to be 2 times negative 242. And then N2H4, which means subtracting the reactant, so minus 95.4. How do you want to approximate this? So in this case, I would just be like, well, I can do that in my head. So that's negative for what? Negative 
Let's get that right. I can do this in my head, yeah. Negative 484, and then I'm just going to simply do minus 100. And if there's only one answer close, we're done. And so in this case, we should be expecting an answer right around negative 584 kilojoules, give or take a few. We rounded. So that should be close enough to narrow it down to the right answer. Cool. So this is the easy route. Notice much easier than Hess's law. So technically, though, you don't even realize it, but you just used Hess's law to do this. So somebody designed a formation reaction in such a way that it's technically an application of Hess's law, but they designed formation reactions so that you didn't have to do Hess's law, that you could simply do products minus reactants, a plug and chug, without even realizing that you were doing Hess's law. And it's much simpler. But you do have to know what a formation reaction is. A formation reaction, when we're giving you the delta H formation reaction, we're giving you the delta H of a special reaction. A formation reaction forms exactly one mole, it's in a textbook on your hand, by the way, forms exactly one mole of a single substance from its individual elements in their standard states. So notice, for example, if, in fact, let's put this off to the side here. If I want to do the formation reaction for sodium chloride, then I would form exactly one mole of sodium chloride. What elements make up sodium chloride? Sodium and chlorine, but they got to be in their standard states. What's the standard state for sodium? Yep, he's a metal, and all the metals are solid except for mercury, which is a liquid. So, and then chlorine, what's the standard state for chlorine? Not just gas, but diatomic gas. He's one of your seven diatomics, so you got to know your diatomics. So notice I put all the standard states on your hand out there. And then you got to balance this thing. How do I balance this? One half Cl2. Now, what if I don't like fractions? Multiply through by 2, except you can't here. Because if I multiply through by 2, will I form exactly one mole of a single substance? I wouldn't. So for a formation reaction, I could not multiply through by 2. It wouldn't be a formation reaction anymore. So if you don't like fractions, then use decimals, like 0 0.5 instead. But no way around it in this case. Cool. Let's say I did the formation reaction for N2H4. What are my... Reactants. N2 and H2, there's the elements in their standard states, and how do I balance? Cool. Anybody by chance know the delta H for this reaction? It's off the top of your head, memorized it? Or you just looked right over here and said, oh, there it is. That's where that 95.4 kilojoules per mole comes from. It's for this reaction right here. Pretty cool with that? Cool, your standard states. So I put a, a little box on your hand out there to show you all the different elements in their standard states. You should know that your noble gases are gases. Then you have Cl2, F2, O2, N2, and H2. The ones in red on this one, those are your gases. You should know that there are two liquids. So, and that's bromine, Br2, and then mercury. And then everything else is a solid. So sometimes they'll include things like cesium as a liquid, but he's a solid. So it turns out his melting point is just above room temperature. It's actually right around your body temperature. So if you put cesium in your hand, it would actually melt in your hand, stuff like that. But he's properly a solid at 25 degrees Celsius. So I don't agree with this table, but everybody cool with that? So what are the two liquids again? bromine and mercury, then you should know most of the gases and then everything else is a solid for its standard state.